Now we will move on to the third method that I can share with you guys, which is cold outreach. So last week when you guys were building that list, it was actually a part of your cold leads, right? You don't know any of them. You just went through the process of identifying the problem signals. And then you found them by identifying who are your ICPs, your target customers and your influencers. That was about it. So manually, you guys have been building your cold lead list. All right, so let's jump into definitions again. Since friends and family is someone who know, like and trust you, let's just flip that. This is basically what strangers will think about you, right? Someone who doesn't know, like and trust you. Again, it can vary in levels. Some people are just neutral because they have no reason to know, like, and trust you. But some people, they have this autom like, automatic hatred for strangers who come up to them. Okay, so again, it can vary in different levels. Okay, so when it comes to cold outreach, the first thing that I want to do is to recalibrate your expectations. I want to reset your expectations first. Okay, why most businesses want to start cold outreach straight away? Right? The reason is very simple. It's because this is the only method that is private. There is literally no way for you to figure out how your competitors or how another company is doing cold outreach. There is just no way for you to know that. The only way is if you disguise yourself and apply for a BD role in their company. Right. If you apply for a job in their company, they might share with you the system. They might even just share a part of the system because person A does this, person B does this. And then the whole thing is the cold outreach system. We might not even know the whole thing. Okay, so this is why a lot of companies, they want to straight away start doing this because private method. Okay, and you are not actually limited by the number of people that you can reach out to. Unlike the first two methods that I mentioned, Right, you only have a certain number of friends and family. You only have a certain number of followers and subscribers. Right, but for cold outreach, literally, like you can find them from anywhere. There are seven billion people in the world. Right. Okay. The third thing is that there is also limited risk when it comes to the platform. So what I mean by that is, when you think of cold outreach, what do you think of? Cold calling. Door knocking. Cold emailing. And recently, because of social media, cold DMing. Right? But if we just ignore cold DMing for now, we look at the other three. Um, I would say even giving out. <coughs> giving out flyers is also a, a, a way to do cold outreach. Right? So all of these methods, they have worked 100 years ago. They have worked 50 years ago. They will still work today. They will probably still work 50 years later. So that is what I mean by there's not much risk that those methods will change. Those platforms will change. Okay, if we are going to call someone, we are probably still going to call someone in future. It's just the device might change. That's about it. Okay, so um, yeah, finally, the upside of having a cold outreach system that works is that it is your own secret formula. Okay, so there are also um, certain like really experienced people who do cold outreach at company A, right? And they are like this star lead gen person in their team. Company B is the competitor. They might reach out to that star employee and try to steal them away, right? I'm going to double your salary. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So once that person goes in, right? the person might try to copy and paste the same system. But you will be surprised that it doesn't work straight away. So that's why I say it is a secret formula. You cannot just replicate it. Even if it's by the same person, they need to optimize it still to that specific business. Okay, so that is the scary thing about outreach. That is why it is so valuable in every business. Okay. And um, yeah, last but not least is that once you have a cold outreach system that works for a certain business, 
because you can't just transfer to another business, right? You can give them a shortcut by copying and pasting, but you need to recalibrate, right? So once a company or a business has a code outreach system that works, usually the value of the company will 5x or 10x. This is proven in data when people are trying to sell their businesses. Okay, very scary, very exciting as well. If, if you see it as excitement, right? So for me, I think that is very exciting. It's crazy. Okay. But obviously, when something is that good, it can also be very bad because it actually takes you years to figure it out. And a lot of businesses, unfortunately, they cannot last that long. So they can't figure out the code outreach before they have to close shop. Okay. So that is the first downside of this. And the reason why cold outreach is so difficult is because there's no like and trust, right? Those, those three things. Those three things are not there. Mm. It's very simple. When it comes to human beings, we just need to know like and trust. Okay. And the third thing is that the entire cold outreach campaign, because it lasts for years, right? It can be super expensive. So for a company that is really successful, usually at least one third of their profits go to co-outreach. Mm. Like that is how expensive their co-outreach is. All right. Mm. And the last expectations that you guys need to have, right, is that you need a huge volume before you can even test a different word in your script, before you can even change it to another platform, whatever it is. Okay, we need a lot of volume, and usually the volume is 10,000. All right. So, when we are doing cold outreach, usually these are the main challenges that we will face. The first one is how the hell am I going to reach someone that I don't know? Right? How can I contact them? And even if you solve that problem, the next thing that you are struggling with is how come they are always ignoring me? Why do they not want to reply to me? Right? And then even if you solve that problem, the third problem will come, which is how come they are not converting? Why do they not want to take me up on my offer? Right? Whether it's just to jump on a call, whether it's this free thing, you'll be surprised, you know, even if you offer someone something for free, it's actually not free. Right? We still need their time. Okay? Just because no money doesn't mean we are, we are asking for nothing. We are still asking them for their time and their attention, their energy. Okay, so these are the three main problems. Let me share a bit more on how we can tackle them one by one. So for the first challenge, how can we actually reach out to them? There are four different ways arranged by the quality of leads and how much money it can cost you to do them. Mm. Okay, so for me, from what I understand, the best way is to hire or outsource to list curators. So what list curators are, right? They are not the same as data scrapers. So what list curators are is that I tell them exactly who I want in my list. They have to go and build that list for me. Okay, so you can imagine why that is probably the most expensive option. But it can also be the best quality list you have ever seen. Because they have to actually go and find it. They have to test it before they can even send you the list. Okay, so it's like a, I would say like a custom built data list. Okay, so to me, that is the best option. Um, yeah, but, but it is just really, really expensive. That's about it. Okay, another way you can do it is to use data scraping tools which is you just scrape data yourself, right? Or you can just buy lists. So I believe that these two methods is probably more familiar for you guys. Like you guys have probably tried them or know someone who has tried one of these methods before. Okay. And you would probably know that the main issue is that the quality is shit. Okay. The data is usually outdated. The data is old or they are no longer using that email. They are no longer using that number. They have changed companies, blah, blah, blah. 
right? So many things has, have happened and you just don't know until you use the list. Okay? And what you guys have actually done last week is DIY. Okay? You didn't technically have to spend any extra money, right? Unless you choose to use some form of software to help you, right? And doing it yourself, in my own opinion, is the best place for you to start because you actually know what you are doing. You actually understand what um, challenges you are facing. You know, why is this so difficult? You know, how can I make sure that uh, the quality of this data or this lead is high or low? Like these are skills that you can only hone if you do it yourself. Okay, unless you are at a place where I totally don't want to learn it, I never want to learn it, let me just outsource it. Then that's a different conversation. Okay, but I strongly believe that everyone should at least try it yourself. Okay, so that is something that you have done last week already. So congratulations. Okay, so say we've, we already got the leads contact info. The second challenge is why are they ignoring me? Right, and I think for all of us, we are also humans. When was the last time you ignored someone who tried to do co outreach on you? Yesterday, last week, last month. <laughs> okay, so you guys know the feeling, mm. right? Sometimes you don't even know what they are selling. It's just that you are so tired, right? You are so hungry. You are so done for the day. You just had a fight with someone. You are you, you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Right? There's just no reason, no, no real logical reason. You're just like, go away. You know? Right. So that is going to happen to you as well. Okay? Um I would say because we know the ICP, we know our target customer, we know the influencer, we have already kind of lowered the chances of getting ignored. Okay, but like, like I said just now, there are also a lot of things that are just human. You had a bad day, you broke up with your boyfriend, uh, you, you lost your wallet, you know, you dropped your iPhone and then the, the screen cracked. So all of these things really impact your mood. And these are things that we just don't know. So the best thing we can do is just make sure that are they our ICP, are they our TC, are they our influencers. That's the best that we can do. Okay. And to lower the chances of getting ignored even more, we personalize. All right. So I think we all pretty much know what personalization means, right? Making your message just personally relatable to them. Okay. But I would like to add to that definition because I also think that we need to treat them like a person. Okay? They are not a cash cow. They are not a tree where if you shake hard enough, money will fall down. Okay? They are still humans at the end of the day. So I would like to add that half. Okay? And the second half is an offer that they will be stupid to say no to. All right. So an offer that they'd be stupid to say no to, right? It's not like, um, like for example, for, for us, we are doing recruitment, right? Do you want us to find someone for you? It's like you're setting yourself up for them to say no, whether it's in their head or like verbally telling you or responding to you, okay? So you have to very carefully and intentionally craft your offer in a way where they cannot say no. Do you guys see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Sometimes some people, the way they ask questions, is like they want you to say no. I don't know why. I don't know if it's their tone or whether they don't believe in what they're selling. You know, uh, I, I once had this person where like, uh, I know you're probably not interested, but would you want to? Then I'm like, then why are you asking me? Right? Are you shy? I don't know. Then then why are you doing co outreach? Right? Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't start with stupid sentences like that. Okay. So um if you guys want to know like who are the best at doing conversations like this, right? My answer is lawyers. 
Okay. So for lawyers, right, we all know that uh, they are in court. You know, they are trying to defend this person who hired them. They don't want to, you know, them to be guilty. And then they are going up against another lawyer who is doing the same thing for that client. But I want to argue that the best lawyers are the ones who start defending their clients before they even get to court. And these are what we call closers. Okay, so where the term closers come from is from the sales term. Close a sale, close a deal. So there are very um there are a lot of high level, very famous lawyers in New York, especially who are very good closers. So they defend their, their clients, they make a deal with the other person even before they go to court. That is how amazing they are. Okay? Um, but obviously, if you don't know someone, like I don't know anyone who is a lawyer in New York. So, But what I do is I read a lot of books, I read a lot of biographies. I also try, I, I also enjoy watching a lot of lawyer shows. I'm sure you guys can think of a few already. Suits. Yes, I think Suits is a really good one because they, they make it the one of the most realistic shows. Yeah. Right. There are a lot of lawyer shows which are a bit unrealistic. You know, somehow the evidence just falls on your lap. Mm. Like, <laughs> come on, man. But if you watch Suits, they actually make it really hard for them. Yeah. Okay? Um, yeah, so an example might be like the, the scene, right? the lawyer walks into a restaurant and then he goes up to this guy. That mm. guy doesn't even know who he is. Mm. Right? So he goes up to his guy straight away. Mr. Mr. A. Let's say it's Mr. A. He just goes up to him. Hi, Mr. A. And then the guy is obviously like, who are you? Oh, I'm John Doe from XYZ. And I'm here to talk to you about X. Right? Whatever topic it is. So obviously the guy is like, Ugh, I'm not interested. And then he turns around to walk away, right? So as he's turning around, obviously, he needs to stop him, right? So mm -hmm. thou, how does the lawyer stop him? Oh, that's fine. Oh, by the way, how's the missus? Right, hope you guys enjoyed your anniversary at that private resort. I, I hear that it is really expensive. $20,000 per night. Actually, I'm really curious. How do you afford that private resort when your business barely makes $100,000 a year? Right, so the lawyer has all this background information. Da, 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 right? And now the guy is like, how do you know all that? You know? And, or they might ask, so what do you want? Right? They feel caught. Mm. Okay? Then the lawyer might say something like, I want to make you an offer that you cannot refuse. Okay? So that is literally what I'm saying. You have to make an offer that they'll be stupid to say no to. But of course, the example that I just gave, anything that you see on TV is supposed to be dramatic, it's supposed to be aggressive and exaggerated. That is of course. Right? But fundamentally, there's still a lot that we can learn from that. Okay, So like Rishi said, Suits is a very good show that you guys can watch, especially just like going onto YouTube, looking for the scenes where they make deals with people. Yeah. How they actually negotiate. We don't have to talk like them. Obviously, there's no need for us to be that cocky. Okay. And the other person is not like they committed a crime. It's because in the show, the other person commits a crime. That's why they can be arrogant like that. But for our case, that's not what's going on. Right. But fundamentally, still a lot that we can learn. Okay. And aside from that, right, what you should say should be specific. Okay, so like the example I gave, he knows about the wife, the anniversary trip that they went on, where they stayed, the private resort, how much the resort actually costs per, per night, how much his business make. Right, he knows everything. So that is my point, personalization. You need to at least try and figure out as much as possible. So don't limit yourself to their LinkedIn profile. Try and search on Facebook. Try to search on Instagram as well. Right? Maybe the wife just had a birthday. Or maybe the uh, touch food, their parents just passed on. I don't know. Right? It could be anything. But just try to find something out. Okay. Uh, and most importantly, 
I still want to encourage you guys to not use a script because like I said, right, it's so personalized. Usually the script doesn't work. You will spend more time trying to fit things into your script. What is the point? Right? A script is supposed to save you time, not do the other way around. Okay. So just do your research, have a reason to reach out to them, at least understand what they're doing, who they are a bit more. Okay. And yeah, the lawyer example, the reason that the lawyer could reach out is because they know that the person is doing something illegal, right? And the lawyer finding out that they are doing something illegal is now the problem that that lead has. So he is there to present the solution. That is the drama in the show, right? So let's bring it back to reality. For a recruitment agency, so I might say something like, Hi, Jack. Let's say his name is Jack. Hi, Jack. Hope you don't mind. I did some digging and I found that you have posted job listings for X roles, whatever role, right? On Y platforms, whatever platforms. Okay. And those listings have been up for this amount of duration. I was wondering, are you still looking for those roles? So I did some personalization. I saw that, hey, they have actually posted all these roles and the listings have been up on LinkedIn, let's say, for about six months. Mm. So I, I can just start a conversation like that. Right, so whether he responds or not, I can continue by saying that, oh, I'm Agnes, by the way. Right, I'm actually really good at finding high quality candidates for Singapore businesses. I just mm. actually helped a Singapore web agency called SAW to find these roles, right? Uh, the candidates for those roles, right? And they have actually just officially onboarded someone yesterday. Half the salary, half the budget, zero upfront fees, no quotas and no levies. Would you like me to start looking for candidates for you right now? So it's just a very chill question. Okay. So if let's say they do respond, I can probably say like, actually, could we just jump on a call so you can just brief me really quickly on what you're looking for? Yeah. You know? Because they will probably send you the JD, but we all know JDs are useless. There is mm. not enough information, right? They probably have an ideal candidate. Yeah. Okay? So I will probably say, actually, can we just jump on a call? Why? Because I want to save your time. So you can quickly tell me what you are looking for. Okay, it is not for me to share with you more about my business. I know a lot of people like to say that. Can we jump on a call so I can share with you more about what I sell? Why would they want to do something for you? We want to do something for them. Okay, so like I said, make an offer. They cannot say no to. All right. So that is if Jack is the founder of the recruitment agency. Uh, no, of, of that business, right? But if let's say it's a hiring company, this time I might want to tweak it a little bit. All right, maybe I would say, hi, Mary. Let's say the person is called Mary. I've seen your job listings on these platforms, hiring for these roles. Hiring in this day and age is tough, right? My boss used to be a HR director, so she told me everything. Haha. <laughs> I might just speak like that. Very mm. candidly, very naturally. Because they are the HR manager. They are also an employee. Right? So I just want to keep it chill. And then whether they reply or not, I will probably say, oh, I'm Agnes, by the way. I'm really good at finding high quality candidates for Singapore businesses. I just helped this business in Singapore find this candidate. They have just officially onboarded yesterday. Right? And yeah, we helped them get the candidate at half the salary Zero, zero upfront fees, there's no quota, no levy problems as well. Actually, do you want me to help you cast your net wider so that you can find a suitable candidate sooner? Mm. Right, because this is HR manager, this is not the founder. The conversation is supposed to be slightly different. Right, and then same thing, I'll probably just say like, actually, do you want to just jump on a call so that you can let me know exactly what candidates you are looking for? Right. Yeah. Or if your management would like to learn more, I also don't mind, you know, talking to them. 
keeping it very chill. But like I said, right, everything in this conversation, there's no template. It's really because I'm talking to HR manager. Mm. And then I just kind of like, I think they have a management, obviously. They have an employer, so they probably cannot take the final call. So let me ask them, do you want me to speak to your management instead? Mm. Something like that, right? Mm. So most importantly, just be casual, be confident. You are suggesting a solution because you saw all the problem signals, right? Mm. So you're not trying to sell something that doesn't work. You literally found out that they might be suffering from this problem. So you're not doing anything wrong. So just be casual, be confident. Okay, so if they say yes, then great. You know, we can schedule the call. Are you available tomorrow, 3 p.m. Singapore time? And if they say no, let's say they don't want to jump on a call, just say no problem. Oh, by the way, I've sent you a connection request on LinkedIn so you can get in touch with me anytime. And by the way, I also create content that I hope helps you out in some way or maybe it entertains you in some way. That's about it. Have a great day. So very chill. I'm very relaxed. Yeah. You know, like I said, if they reply me, that is like a bonus for me. But if they say yes, it's just the cherry on top. Mm. You know, I'm just keeping it very casual. I have a solution to your potential problem. You don't want it, honestly, your loss. Because I'm going to go to your competitors, you know. So that's kind of the mindset that, that I carry with me. Right, and I can promise you my mindset was, was not like this years ago. I was very demotivated. It took me, um, once it took me a full day to kind of recover from a person who ghosted me. Mm. That day I couldn't work because I was so like down. I just took a day off. I read a lot of business books, marketing books. And I just started reading books and just chilling that day. So that was how bad it was for me. But if I can get over it, you guys can do it also. Okay. All right. The next problem, they don't take you up on that offer. Right. Let's say they don't say, yes, I want to uh, jump on that call. Mm -hmm. right? Or if they don't even reply to whatever you are saying. Honestly, please take the pressure off yourself. Just follow up as you would whether it's friends and family or not. Mm -hmm. Keep it casual. Just don't put the pressure on yourself. We cannot control whether someone responds, uh, responds to us or not. Mm. Right? But all we can control is how much we try. So just focus on that part. Okay? So we can follow up multiple times in multiple ways. So like the example I gave you earlier, right? If I were to contact Jack, let's say mm -hmm. I message him on LinkedIn, right? Instead of messaging him, hey Jack, I, uh, you probably missed my, my message last time. Let me, you know, uh, I'm just trying to follow up here. Da, da, da. I'm not going to message them again. Wouldn't that be silly? So what I want to do, let me record a voice message on LinkedIn. Mm. Hey Jack, I know you are really busy and I thought a voice note would be the quickest way. And you will know that I'm a real person, haha. <laughs> I just want to keep it very chill. That is the whole point. Anyway, for the roles that you're trying to hire, right, I actually helped another company in Singapore. It's called Keeper. Mm. I helped them hire someone before. They are located at Ubi. I'm not sure whether you heard of them or not. Mm. So I purposely say the name of the road in Singapore. Um, if you want me to get started or if you just want to, you know, learn more about what the hell it is that we do, right? Mm. Uh, I would love to jump on a call. No more than 15 minutes. I promise that is it. Anyway, have a good day, Jack. Hope to hear from you soon. Done. Send. Okay. Keep it chill. We are not doing anything wrong. Okay. So that is an example of how you can follow up in a different way. If you mm. messaged on LinkedIn... Try to record your voice note, okay? Or another way that you can also contact them is let's say you have an email address. You found their email address on their LinkedIn profile. Then try an email. Hmm. You know, hi Jack, we had a brief chat on LinkedIn previously about this topic, whatever topic it is. I'm sure you have a lot on your plate. Hmm. Uh, I can 
you know, I, I would love to take care of this hiring headache for you. Mm. I've recently helped a company called Keeper who that is located at Ubi hire for those roles. So I know that I will knock it out of the park for you too. Right, something like that. So I have an email drafted I can just send. Just follow up multiple times, multiple ways. And if you have multiple people from the same business that you are actually reaching out to, right, you can even add more info from there. Oh, by the way, Jack, I briefly spoke to Mary as well, the HR manager. We spoke about XYZ. Mm. So you can see that every message that we are talking to them, um, that we have sent to them, right, it always has something to prove that I am not a robot. That I really want to help you. That I really understand your business. I really did some research. Okay. And if you have enough information, you can even try to call the business's contact number. Right? You know how some websites, um, some business websites, they have the business's contact number. And it just goes to the front desk or something. You can even just try to call and ask for Jack or Mary directly. Right? Hello. Yeah, this is Agnes. I'm looking for Jack. Uh, I'm Agnes calling from company ABC. I had a chat with Mary previously also, the HR manager, right? Can I speak to Jack, please? Mm. So you see, every word that I say, it sounds like I'm not a stranger. Mm. I'm not spam. Mm. But actually, I'm doing co outreach. Mm. Okay? And if all else fails, just restart six months later. Restart the conversation six months later. Check for problem signals again six months later and then reach out again. Okay? Or if you have a feeling like you are ignoring them, maybe you know that they read your messages but they are not responding, it's okay. If you see that they have a business milestone or something, mm. message them, hey, congratulations on your fifth year of your business. That's it. Right? If you feel like you, you are almost making them not like you or block you, just congratulate them, do something nice. That's it. Okay? So the first goal is to get them interested in your offer and jump on a call. The second goal is to then warm them up. Either through your content or make them know, like, and trust you more before you try again. Mm. Okay? So that, to me, is what co-outreach is. And I know for some of you, you might be thinking this. Right? Choose your choice of word and fill in the blank. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all have a different word. Right? Because cold outreach, it sounds like so much work. Mm. Right? It takes so much time and the success rate seems really low as well. Mm. Right? But that is why business is hard. This is the real reason why building a business is hard. That's why not everyone has a million dollar business. Mm. Okay, and truth be told, right, the conversion rate of cold outreach is as low as half a percent. So what that means is for every 100 people that you actually have a conversation with, not even one will say that they want to meet with you. Like that is how low the response rate can get. Okay. So, if you really want cold outreach to work, right, you need to have this blatant belief that whatever you have to offer is a thousand percent going to benefit them. If you yourself are not convinced, don't expect one out of a hundred people to be convinced. Mm. Okay, very important. Mm. And the next thing that you need is volume. Mm. My favorite number is 100. Okay, I have adopted 100 in my entire life, even my personal life. Mm. I like the number 100. So mm. it can be 100 new leads on my list every day. That is mm. the goal that I set for myself. Right? It can be 100 conversations that I have per day or I attempt to have 100 conversations per day. Right? It can be 100 minutes of creating content. It can be 100 minutes that I spend on every ICP doing research. Right. It can be doing the same thing for a hundred days before I do anything. So just use the word 100, the number 100. Okay, The number just works very well 
because it's kind of difficult to achieve, but it is also not unrealistic. Okay, so for you guys, same thing. For business development, right, it is just a game of greed. How long can you last? That is about it. But if you quit now, the next role that you get as business development, you just restart again. So in your career, you're not really progressing. You're just in a hamster wheel of restarting again and again and again. So I would suggest not to give up. Okay, and one of the ways that we can do to, um, one of the things that we can do to reduce your workload is use technology, use AI. We are in a very nice stage right now where we have the best AI tools. We have a bunch of tech out there that we can use. Use them to your advantage. Okay. My personal belief is that we are severely under leveraging tech. Mm. We don't use it enough. We don't use it in almost everything that we are doing, right? And that is something that I embody at SAW. That's why we even have SAW agency, right? We provide mm -hmm. IT solutions because everyone is just not using tech enough. End of story. Okay, so some examples that you can um, incorporate into your outreach, right, is to pre-record some stuff. Maybe you can pre-record some voice notes, pre-record some videos, even if you, you decide to, to use your, your face, right? Or you can create some templates, whether it's for emails, for scripts, for your messages, etc. Anything you want, okay? But I know earlier I said that don't use scripts, right? That was something that I mentioned multiple times, but let me just clarify. When I say don't use scripts, right? I mean don't use it right at the start. Don't use it since day one, okay? But as you do, so the magic number, 100, right? Reach out 100 times. Reach out for 100 days, for 100 times each day. Total is 10,000. Once you have 10,000, you probably will start seeing patterns, right? And after you have done all of those work, then you can start thinking about scripts and templates and how can I automate this thing? How can I do the other thing? And the best part if, uh, is that, let's say the, the team expands. You have a new BD joining in, or you have this sales guy joining in, whatever you want to call them, right? How easy it is for you to share your data with them, right? Here's a script, right? How I got to this is because I did this 10,000 times, okay? So it is their turn to do their 10,000 times as well as you continue doing your 10,000 times. 10,000 times 10,000 is 100,000. The compounding effect is 1,000%. Okay? You guys can improve your scripts from there. So every big company, they have scripts, they have templates, they have systems. But don't rush to create one right from day one because you have no idea what is what. Okay, So that is what I'm trying to say. And with AI, you can use it to personalize anything that you do as well. Even if you record a voice note, do you know that there are tools that can mimic your voice and talk for you? Those are AI tools that are available out there. Mm. There are also video tools. There was one tool I saw that was so realistic. You can record a video for the tool and you can change the script and it can generate a new video for you. So it is crazy good what AI can do. It's just whether you want to use it or not. Okay. And if let's say you are just writing a message or something, right? The easiest way, I just use ChatGPT. Okay. I can just share details of the person, a few bullet points. Like here is the detail of the person. Here is like a, a sample template of what I want to say. Personalize this for, for me. And then you see the output. Right. From there, obviously, it might not be perfect, but you can just tweak it super fast. Right. So use all these tools to your advantage. Okay. Another way that you can leverage tech right, is to use it to distribute faster. So just now is to create your messages faster. Now is to distribute your messages faster. There are so many software out there. Okay. You can mass send emails, you can mass send texts, you can mass send so many different things right now. Okay, so there are many ways that can help you ease your load. 
You can keep a lookout for them, suggest them to each other. You can always discuss on how we can implement them into your workload to make things easier. All right. Any questions? Oh, no. I think I have no questions. Okay. So by now, I know probably you guys, your brains have melted. Or at least half of it has melted. So I've gone through all three methods. I've gone through as deeply as I can, but without going in too deeply. I'm pretty sure you all see by now that each method I can take at least two hours to tell you everything that I have learned. Okay, whatever I share with you is honestly the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. But now that you have a good understanding, take some time to go and think for yourself. What method do you want to use? My recommendation is doing content for sure, right? Mm. And on top of that, do one of the outreach methods, either mm. warm or cool. Mm. Okay, you guys can do your own. Or if you feel like your schedule, you, you can't manage, start with either warm or cool outreach and leave the content out first. Mm. That's something that I recommend. But because I do not recommend going into all three at once. Okay. But if you kind of get good at one, you can add another one later at half the effort. Mm. It kind of compounds from there. right? So the maximum I would suggest per person, don't choose more than two methods. If you can, just choose one. But I leave it up to you all to decide. So 